Good morning, gang. Happy Sunday morning. Nice pitch black seven o'clock. <laughs> so we'll get started. Anybody remember the movie Groundhog Day? Probably most of us. You know, Bill Murray lived the same day over and over and over and over again, trying to right the wrongs that were committed. 2022 seems to look like Groundhog Day, except for the part of righting the wrongs. Our illustrious potato in chief, uh, you know, has already predicted that this winter will be a winter of severe illness and death. For who is yet to be determined? But what we're already seeing, <clears throat> and mind you, like we talked about last night, you know, it's still warm, okay? It was 65 degrees here yesterday. Uh, even a couple of you guys who were up in Massachusetts mentioned it was 50 degrees, okay? Boston, 50 degrees in December. Right, okay, sure. We haven't got to cold weather yet. And you have all this panic already setting in. And Biden is right there stoking the fires. Okay, like I said, you know, a winter of severe illness and death. Is he speculating on who, though? Okay. Now, mind you this, you know, it's well documented that the CDC has already said that 79% of the cases of people who have tested positive for Omicron are the ones who are vaccinated. All right. So, hmm, I wonder where that severe illness and death is going to come from. But here's what we need to pay attention to. Remember all the talk, I'm going to shut down the virus. No, I'm not going to shut down the economy. And what happened last year, okay? We shut down the economy, at least in the blue states, okay? Well, here it is in our 50 and 60 degree mid-December, week before Christmas. And we're already hearing about shutdowns, okay? Mind you with the Omicron variant, okay, that I think so far we have, if I'm not mistaken, worldwide we have one death. One. Okay. Harvard University, Stanford University, both, at least in name, a couple of very good schools. You know, up until recently they weren't liberal indoctrination centers, uh, and they had respect with the name. They're going to start the 2022 spring semester with online classes again. Okay. Uh, Penn State has come out and said they're going to have, uh, or they're preparing to start the semester with online classes. For anybody that's in the sports program, that might be good, unless, of course, they're in the metaverse somewhere because you can still be sexually assaulted there. But... That's a complete different story. Georgetown, they're restricting indoor dining to takeout only. You know, again, some of you guys have kids, grandkids in college. Y'all know my daughter just recently graduated. I mean, spent her senior year in online learning. Yippee. Okay, way to, way to finish out those college years before hitting the real world. Okay. But do the kids get as good of an education in the online world. Not by a long shot, okay? We saw this with uh, last year and talking about elementary school, middle school, high school kids who basically didn't learn anything through the online learning. But that's fine for the teachers association because, or the teachers union, because they don't want to give D's and F's anyway. And hey, we just promote people onto the next grade anyway. Who cares if they learn something? Which is hence why we have all these kids who don't know how to spell their own name by the time they graduate high school. Okay, you know, could couldn't write a check if you know you gave them a computer to do it. But this isn't the only thing. 
you know, now you're starting to see businesses doing this, okay? at least again in the blue states. And restaurants closing. Uh, I mean, that's going on all over the place in New York and Washington, D.C. You had a Broadway show shut down. You've had the NFL post football games for this weekend, postponed football games for this weekend. Uh, I mean, this this is what I thought was kind of humorous. You know, instead of playing the game on Sunday, we're going to play the game on Monday or Tuesday. Like, oh my God, if we give it 24 hours, it'll all be gone away. You know, this kind of reminds me of, you know, give us two weeks to stop the spread. Well, we're at about day 700 of the two weeks to stop the spread. So, you know, this is where it, it's getting silly and what we need to take a look at. I mean, even Saturday Night Live last night did their performance uh, <clears throat> without a live audience because, oh my God, we're worried about somebody spreading Omicron. Okay. Sure. That's your choice. The problem is when you get into this is those choices are being made by somebody who is totally thinking about themselves and not thinking about anybody else. The school districts can say all they want to school districts, the colleges, wherever it is, can say, oh, we're thinking about the students, everything. No, they're not. They just don't want to go to work. Okay. That's all it is. The restaurants, you know, they don't want to get fined. You know, you saw the story the other day about some inspector going into a bar in New York. And I mean, and this was classic. The owner of the bar was checking vaccine passports at the door like she's supposed to. And the inspector came and didn't have her vaccine passport. And so the owner of the bar did not let her in. And this inspector was pissed. It's my job to check everybody for this. No, you know, if I let you in, you say, they let me in without a vaccine passport. Poof, here's your $5,000 fine. And they let her, they told her to go pound sand. She came back, had her vaccine passport, and oh yeah, this bar actually passed its inspection too. But this is the thing. The government, the liberal establishment, okay, I think we can pretty much agree that the education system is a liberal establishment, is doing whatever they can to shut down the country, to destroy the economy, to destroy the education system. They don't care because they want to, they want to build the whole thing back up, build back better. You know, they want to build it up with a hammer and a sickle. That, I mean, those are the tools they're going to use. You know what I mean? Okay. This is what we need to prep for. A lot of you guys, either you or your kids, are homeschooling. And kudos to all of you for doing that because that is difficult work. Okay, Because I remember just trying to help my daughter with her homework in high school and I'm like, holy crap, I haven't done this in 30 years. How the hell? I've got, I had to go back and figure out how to do it. And try, okay, shift the brain back 30 years and try to figure out some of this math again. Okay. This is, this is, again, like I keep saying, the 1800s type stuff. We're on our own. There is going to be, the education system is going to be shut down. And I mean, now you're going to have teenagers going, Dad, I don't know what six plus four is. Mom, how do you spell dog? Okay. I mean, the, the, read a book. You know, go back to the 1800s and how many people could read. Not many. We're going to wind up in that same situation. And I say this because we've been on this path and this is, I mean, coronavirus is recent, no doubt. But we've been on this path of destruction my entire life. 
Okay? And it may be beforehand, okay? I'm not old enough to remember all of it. But I mean, let's look at the leadership, okay, we've had in this country in my lifetime. I was born when LBJ was president, okay? You know, there's one of the, the greatest racists ever to sit in the White House that existed. You know, you followed him with Richard Nixon. I am not a crook, okay? Jerry Ford was the Republican uh, version of Joe Biden, okay? Jimmy Carter, holy crap. I mean, you know, he couldn't lead his way out of a wet paper bag. Then we got Ronald Reagan, and the country got back on track. Unfortunately, following him, we had George Bush, who was just a warmonger, all right? Then we got the philanderer Bill, Bill Clinton, you know, again, who was only concerned about himself. George Bush II, just like Dad, let's go to war somewhere. That's, you know, war, war is what we're good for, you know. Then we got Barry Obozo, uh, you know, who, again, is somebody who was completely out for himself, the ultimate narcissist. Then we got a good one again. Then we got Trump. Then we got somebody who actually cared for this country. And now we've got Potato Joe. I mean, if you go through, that's the leadership the United States has seen in the last 50 years. There are two that were decent, good, Reagan and Trump. What did both of them have in common? They were devout anti-communists and devout pro-America. Anybody who is not cut from that cloth not only doesn't deserve to run this country, doesn't deserve to live in this country. Pinball out.